Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Polkadot Mini Summit here at ETH Denver. My name is Bill Laboon. I am the Director of Education and um, uh, Governance Initiatives at Web3 Foundation in Zug, Switzerland. Uh, I'm going to do a very brief overview of Polkadot. There's uh, a lot to say and not a lot of time to say it in. So, go right into it. So, when Polkadot was first thought of, uh, by, mostly by Gavin Wood, uh, who was CTO of the Ethereum Foundation, developer of Solidity Language, he realized there were a lot of problems with blockchain technology and the blockchains that were out there at that time. So first, they can't communicate with each other. Uh, it's very, you know, very difficult for one chain to communicate trustlessly with another one. Even trustfully, it's difficult. We see a lot of bridge hacks even today. Uh, they can't scale. We see lots of problems with scaling on all kinds of parameters in terms of transactions per second, size of the transactions, et cetera. Poor security. We see a lot of network get attacked by hackers. They can't be easily customized. If you want to create uh, an, uh, you know, another EVM chain, that's relatively straightforward. But if you want to do something special or specific, it's much more difficult to do. Poor governance, often governed by a multi-sig or maybe no governance at all. Uh, and upgrades are difficult, which means it's problematic to future-proof them, to ensure that as new features come along or as problems are seen, that you can't update them. So how do we solve all of this? Well, a big idea behind Polkadot and solving a lot of these problems is that having a single chain is actually a really bad idea. There isn't one size fits all. One use case may be really helped by having smart contracts on your chain, other use cases not, some with UTXOs, some with accounts. There's all kinds of different things that you can do when you're creating a chain, and all of these chains should be able to interoperate with each other. And it turns out, we'll talk about why, having all these chains solves a lot of other problems that we saw in legacy blockchains. So Polkadot is what we call a heterogeneous or heterogeneously sharded multi-chain protocol that connects and secures blockchains with pooled security and interoperability. And I'm sure you've heard a lot of buzzwords already at ETH Denver, uh, so it's sort of a very easy uh, translation. Polkadot is not just a blockchain. It is a set of blockchains that can work together, talk to each other, and share in the security of the network. And it makes this easy by allowing you to develop a chain and plug in to the existing central chain of Polkadot, what we call the relay chain, and allow the developers of that chain to focus on what they do best, the actual rules of that blockchain, what you want it to do. So a very brief overview of the architecture of Polkadot. I've already mentioned the relay chain, or layer zero, which is the, uh, the central chain of Polkadot. It provides economic security and interoperability to the chains that connect to it. There are also parachains that connect to the relay chain and can do different things. So we have Asset Hub. We have Kilt for identity. We have Moonbeam for EVM smart contracts. We have ASTAR for, other, for EVM and other kinds of smart contracts. Uh, you know, we have uh, um, Subsocial for social networking. We have Zeitgeist uh, for prediction markets. There are 49 different parachains operating right now on Polkadot and more coming all of the time. So this isn't theoretical, right? I see a lot of people who have uh, developed these parachains out in the audience right now. They have been running on Polkadot since 2021. And there is room for many more uh, to join. In terms of these chains interacting with each other, we use a technology called XCM, cross-chain messaging. Uh, this is live, has an average of over 2,000 cross-chain messages per week, uh, over 640,000 in total. If you're interested in building one of these parachains, we provide Substrate with a Polkadot SDK. 
which allows you to very easily build your own blockchain. This is actually why I got into Polkadot in the first place. I saw uh, Gav's talk at 2018 at Web3 Summit about he pulled a, a laptop out of a you know, brand new MacBook and then an hour later had a, a new blockchain with specific rules. And I thought that was super cool. And if you've ever done any development in something like Ruby on Rails where you can very easily get a website up and running, you don't worry about all of the details of networking, you just focus on the rules. Substrate is similar. There are a lot of different libraries, what we call palettes, uh, and you can choose which ones you want or develop your own, have them tied together in different ways and interact in, with each other in different ways in a very you know, easy to use uh, mechanism. You're out of the box, you can very quickly get your own blockchain up and running. However, Substrate is not just used for building on Polkadot. Uh, if you think of it as sort of a, a diagram here, you know, uh, we have Polkadot, we have many different Substrate built chains, but there are a lot of other chains out there that are built uh, on this technology that people don't even know they're using you know, uh, Polkadot developed technology uh, behind the scenes. So this is one of the you know, great things, I think, about Polkadot. It is very you know, open source. You can develop your chain, decide you want to be a part of Polkadot, but you're not stuck there if you don't want to be. And you know, conversely, if you, build, you don't come onto Polkadot and decide later you want to and you build on Substrate, it's relatively easy to do so. A very cool thing about Polkadot is that the rules for both the relay chain and the parachains are not stored on the nodes. They're actually stored in, on the blockchain itself, which means it's very easy to, to upgrade because any node that is following the rules of your chain, it's automatically going to upgrade as the, cha as the chain goes to the, uh, uh, the next, what we call runtime, the next rules if you want to upgrade. So it's a WebAssembly uh, bytecode. It's you actually on chain. You can view. You can see the rules of the chain. You know and uh, interpret it your, yourself. It allows for some really cool functionality. Um, you know one of the things that uh, just got released, like uh, uh, actually I think about two days ago, is something called uh, Chopsticks on Polkadot.js, which allows you to fork a version of any chain and play around it with yourself. It gives you yourself uh, 100,000 tokens and see, all right, what would happen if I issued this uh, transaction? What would it do? It's a super you know, great developer user experience. Polkadot always has a lot of developers interested in it because you really can do some very interesting things, uh, which you can't really do with other blockchains, where you know, if you do want to change how it works at a fundamental level, you have to do a hard fork, which requires a lot of coordination. And again, this is not theoretical. This is not something that I'm telling you, wait until Q4, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Polkadot Relay Chain has upgraded 52 times since launching um, almost uh, four years ago. And the parachains themselves have also upgraded uh, num numerous times. You know, different parachains can upgrade at different times when they release new functionality. Polkadot is incredibly decentralized. We have a very um, full-featured governance system that is without what we call first-class citizens. One dot is one vote. And everything can be voted on and changed in the system. If you don't like the inflation rate, if you uh, are against a runtime upgrade that's proposed, you know, the dot holders are the only ones who can allow that upgrade to go through or conversely to vote against it. Uh, and they're actually dozens of referenda going on uh, at all times in the ecosystem. The Polkadot governance, it's full of, of very passionate people uh, with, you know, like, uh, almost like, you know, political parties that have formed. So it's a very, very interesting um, governance uh, mechanism. And we are not standing still. Of course, just like I mentioned, you can upgrade the chain, and we are doing that all the time as we add new features, new functionality, figure things out, et cetera. So um, I'm not going to have time to go into the details of all of these different uh, uh, proposed upgrades, but hopefully just that the names uh, make it sound like there's going to be some interesting stuff coming. Uh, very quickly, Agile Core Time allows you to 
adjust basically what is the, the necessity in terms of uh, core time for your blockchain. If you are, have a blockchain that requires a lot of computational resources, you might need more. If you have one that needs less, then you'll need less. So you can actually save money. Uh, core Jam allows you to run things other than just parachains on the relay chain directly. Uh, Hermit relay chain, we're going to put more and more, we're going to offload more um, superfluous capabilities from the relay chain to allow more, um, more parachains to, uh, to, to work on it. Uh, Sassafras increases the security of the validators, and we are really working on decentralizing uh, the, the humans that are involved. Uh, that sounds kind of disturbing, decentralizing a human, <laughs> but what we mean is that there should be more people involved and more abilities to get involved. And we have, we have lots of different um, uh, new uh, uh, programs that, you know, coming out that help to, and features built into the blockchain that help this decentralization. So Polkadot solves a lot of the problems that we saw in traditional blockchains. Any chain on Polkadot can easily interact with others handles heavy traffic at scale. When the inscription craze occurred uh, on, on Polkadot, it didn't even blink. Fees didn't even go up. And there were over uh, six or seven million transactions in a day on the, just on the relay chain. Again, it, relay chain didn't blink, and there were 49 other chains that also could uh, have this uh, similar amount of transactions per second. Um, so if all of this has sounded interesting to you, working on an extremely scalable system that allows a lot of freedom to developers. Uh, we have a lot of assistance available besides an on-chain treasury, and we've had uh, you know, uh, hundreds of teams have gotten funding from the on-chain treasury. Uh, Web3 Foundation has a, a grants program for people building technical open source, uh, source things. Decentralized futures for people building on Polkadot, decentralized voices to give more voting power to people. Thousand validators program for people looking to validate. Lots of different educational opportunities out there. Thanks, everyone.